Welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kira Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A-teams. Welcome to the Dental A-Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A-Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, I have my right hand, one of my best friends. Oh my gosh, I love this girl with so much of my heart and soul. She's our traveling coach. Uh, She is... She implements like a machine. She has relationships beyond like people just love her. And I don't blame them because I feel the exact same way. But this is the girl who started Dental A Team with me. I literally called her on our, I don't even remember. I was driving somewhere. We created this Dental A Team idea. And I am so excited to have one of my best friends, uh, mentors, uh, coaches, Tiffany Trader. Welcome back, girl. How are you today? I am good. Thank you. And I think that it was your drive when you were on that hiatus of getting all 50 states and you were like <laughs> in the middle of the night taking pictures in front of state signs. Oh, gosh. If you guys I don't know what Tiff's definitely. talking about, I did make this. I got sick of traveling. I traveled a lot the first year of coaching a lot. Like I'd be gone for five weeks at a time. And um, so I decided to make a game out of it because it made it more fun. And I told Tiffany, I was like, Tiff, got this great idea. I'm going to hit all 50 states in one year's time period. Oh my gosh. I found out who my true (laughs) friends were and also how bad of an idea that was. My mom, Jason and Tiffany kept me alive on so many drives. (laughs) Like I think the worst was when I texted you when I had to get that loop of like Nebraska and had to go to Montana and South Dakota. And it was like this like 15 hour loop that I decided to drive because I didn't know how else to get those states. And I was like, Tiff, the moment I realized that this was such a bad idea, but I'm doing it. So if you accomplished it, I did. And last year I missed it by, I think six states. And I remember looking like, I don't even care (laughs) at this point. (laughs) I'm over it. I do not want to do a 16 hour loop again for a few states. No, thank you. (laughs) But all right, Miss Tiffy. Uh, By the way, guys, that's definitely what I call Tiffany. I don't know where it came from. (laughs) It just came out right now. But um, you've had some some interesting offices ask you a lot of topics. So let's dive into your your topic of choice today that I know is going to be incredible. You always have great ideas. So let's dive into that. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, so I've had a few offices um, very recently. I think that, start over. I think that we've all been in like a hiring <laughs> Let's process. This. Hang on, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been in this hiring process across the country. And what it's bringing up for people is onboarding um, new team members and really just trying to get people to onboard with the office manager and also older team members um, just standing behind the office manager. So some things that I've seen coming up are, are questions that office managers have been asking me recently is how do I get my team to like me? Um, like how do I get them to do the things I want them to do? Mm-hmm. And how do I get them to just be as excited about the goals as I am? So I thought they all kind of go hand in hand. You know, they do. They really do. And those are real fears. And those are real problems. And that really is the day to day life of an office manager. So Mm -hmm. I agree. Let's let's dive into that a little bit more. What have you found are solutions to that? And how can people overcome that? Because it is tricky. And it's yeah, I feel like that's like the road less traveled that you've got to travel. It really is. I think as I think Um, When we take the office manager position, we're super excited and it's really cool. And we just like want to be amazing. And then we find out that it's actually like really freaking hard and (laughs) um, people don't really like being told what to do. Uh So it's like this weird line that we have to sit in where we really want to be friends with people, but we have to be that manager too. So it's this weird line. And I think Every single little subject that I just talked about, we could do an entire podcast on, but I thought it would be good to do our quick one today because we like to keep them short for people so they listen to them, Mm -hmm. is to talk about the consistency piece of being an office manager. And I think it really, truly boils down to staying consistent with what, number one, with what you said you were going to do. 
So Mm -hmm. always do what you said you were going to do, have that good follow through and keep that consistency going and just stay with whatever it is. So if you want your team to be excited, as excited about the goals as you are, stay as excited about the goals as you are. (laughs) So if you just like today, if today you're like, let's do it. We're going to hit 50,000. We're going to do this. Let's go guys. And then tomorrow, today you didn't get a great response. People were like, eh, we'll see what happens. Tomorrow you're like, you know what? I, <laughs> I love that you're saying this. exactly what people really say. Like, eh. <laughs> they do. Nah, we'll see. Like, let's see what we do. And then tomorrow you're like, hey guys, I really do think we can make it. Like, what did we say? 50. And then the next day you're like, you know what? Maybe we could do like 48. <laughs> and then like within a couple days time, you're, you've allowed your team's attitude to unravel the hype that you had. Mm -hmm. And so what it shows them is that they were right. We can't do that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were right. We knew it was a lofty goal. She was just trying to push us to see how far we could go. Good thing we stayed consistent with our attitude (laughs) because now we have a goal that's realistic. And so I don't think anyone does it to be negative or to be pessimistic. I think it's just natural tendency. Um, So as an office manager, you have to stay high. You have to stay up there and and peppy positive pushing them as best you can. But most of all, whatever you came in with, like stay consistent. Don't falter. Don't change these things. Don't alter things to suit someone else. If it's what you're implementing, implement it. Mm -hmm. See it through. See if it's going to work and then make changes later. Excuse me. We like six weeks. Yes, (laughs) Because it works out really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. Um, So try anything for like six weeks before altering and changing it. Because number one, that consistency piece for them shows them that they can trust you and respect you. And number two, you really truly don't know if it's going to work until you play it through. Then on top of that, if after playing it through, you really do see there are tweaks that need to be made, your team can trust that it's not end all be all, Mm -hmm. that you are going to take what they're saying and you're going to alter and change it when it's necessary. I love that you just stuck with the consistency piece because all those things that you were listing off, like, I want people to like me. Guess what? Mm -hmm. It is better to be respected than it is to be liked. And I think respect comes from when you do what you say you're going to do and you follow through. And as someone who loves to talk and make promises, I will tell you with Tiffany, she has watched me over the last several years. Um, I think I've gotten a lot better. So Tiff, agree or disagree. It's totally fine. This is doing a personal inventory with you right now. So everyone (laughs) welcome to this. (laughs) Um, But I really tried hard because I know how important it is to be consistent with my team. They can count on it. I'm not going to whiplash them back and forth that things are always changing. And I'm also a lot more cautious with the words I speak because I don't want to be inconsistent. I don't want to come to them again. Of course, things are going to change. That is a natural evolving company and it should. Your practice should be evolving and innovating. No doubt that has to happen. But I really do think the more you you put this consistency and integrity piece at the forefront of your mind, you have a relationship with your words and you're less likely to promise things that you know you can't actually deliver. And therefore, I think people actually like you better because they know they can trust you, count on you, because you're going to do the things that you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. It's not just all uh, talk and sugarcoating to tell them what they want to hear in the moment, but never following through with what really needs to happen. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, um, I think on the topic of wanting the team to like you, I think people like consistency. They like things that they can count on, that they can trust, um, that they can see face value of. And so I really think if you're, if you're trying to get a team to stand behind you on a decision that you've made or really just feel like they've got your back, you have to show up first and then they're going to follow you. And if you're showing up, you're doing the things you expect them to do. You're there when you're when you're supposed to be there because you expect them to be there. You're following all of those consistency pieces and just being there, telling them how great they are or telling them when they're not great. Like every every piece of that puzzle, every side to everything that you do as an office manager is building that relationship and the consistency showing up every day is what's going to make them like you mm-hmm. as a person and as a manager. For sure. And as you're saying it, Tiff, I think something else, and I'm curious what your take is on it. I feel yeah. that when I show up and I'm peppy positive, 
like there are days when I'm not peppy positive and I have to show up peppy positive if I'm going to be consistent and, and continue on. But I've, I, I hear a lot of office managers who guess what? There are days when you just have a bad day. There are days when right. things don't go well. And I think, a uh, maybe a way to avoid something to avoid is those office managers go and vent to the team or they'll go mm-hmm. and use the team as their sounding board, which I'm curious what your take is on it. Cause there's one side of me that's like, well, that's good. Cause then they see you authentically. The other part of me is like, but then you're not showing up and you're actually dragging your team down and you're unraveling everything you just worked on. You need to reach outside of that organization. I literally have coaches outside of my organization, people I can talk to brainstorm with, tell them when I'm frustrated because I've made the mistake of when I'm having a rough day, like venting to Tiff about a coach. I have 100% Mm -hmm. been guilty of this. And I feel like as a team member that like, funnels you down a negative path as well. But what is, what's your take on that? What do you see? Because that is a zone as an office manager. I think it's kind of a lonely world. And how do you keep yourself on this high without bringing your team down, even when you have those bad days? Yeah, well, I think it's um, I think it's super important, number one, to note that we've all been there. I've been there. Right? Oh, I did that as an office Same. manager and 100%. had to learn the hard way, right? We all learn the hard way. And then number two, I think it's important to note, too, that we're not all peppy and positive, okay? Or we all, I guess that's not true. That's not what I want to say. I want to say we all have our own version of peppy and positive. So mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that we have to show up Kira every morning or we show up Tiffany every morning. Like you show up authentically you every morning and that's your consistency piece. If you're authentically negative, um, depressed, low tone, then there's something else. There's something else behind the scenes going on. And it's not it's not just work, right? There's another consistency piece, an integrity piece somewhere in the personal life that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. That's different. Coming and showing up for your team is like, hey guys, I am so proud to be here with you. I'm so proud to stand behind you and support you and be here for you consistently every single day. Venting piece, that is so difficult. Um, I think the most difficult piece is when you're a part of your team member and mm-hmm. you're pulled up to office manager because mm-hmm. as a team member, that was our life, right? Mm-hmm. Like that was just kind of like day to day. Um, but as an office manager, you really can't do that. And one thing that I have learned is that, and as soon as it happens, the first thought that I think goes through many people's brain is if she's willing to talk to me like this about her, about someone else, what is she willing to say about me totally. to someone else? Totally. And so it breaks the trust. So you think you're bonding, you're like creating this relationship with this person and you have someone you can talk to. This is my go-to person. But really what's happening is even if they don't think it in the forefront of their brains, in the back, you're breaking trust walls down. So anytime something happens or that person you vented to feels sketch at all about anything that's happening, she's going to immediately start to resent and think that it's you. Mm -hmm. It's just the go-to. So I always, always suggest doctor, right? If you've got something and you don't have someone, a network of other managers to talk to or just a friend or a husband or a spouse outside of work to talk to, talk to doctor. He doesn't need, he or she doesn't need to fix it, but they're a sounding board, just like you want them to be able to talk to you. Um, but number one, I, I, that's why we all have best friends, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's why we have people who aren't even in our field that we can talk to because it's not about trying to fix it. Normally it's just venting about something that happened and you just need to release the words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And when you can, I love that you talked about how it breaks trust within your practice, because if you're willing to do this for someone else, what do you, what does that say that you're saying about them? Like, I love that because teams, um, when we go back to the whole topic of them liking you and all those different pieces, uh, teams like a place that feels safe and secure where they know yep. that you're fair, that what you say to one person is what you say to all. And it's not this like pick and choose me your favorites that creates safety and security within teams. That's the consistency piece that tip was talking about. These are all the pieces. And so I do love that you talked about doctor doctor has to maintain that trust and confidentiality though. If office manager comes to you yes. and talks about this doctor, if you go and you rat on them and tell what they said to someone else, you've lost instant trust. They will not like that is a hard thing to come back from. But um, I also love that you talked about friends and I am really cautious. Um, this has grown over the years and Tiffany, I'm sure you're the same way. 
But over the years, I realized there are certain people that I will or won't talk to about it because I don't want them to like swirl me in the drama. I want yes. someone who is who's going to see like, yep, fantastic here. Like you had a rough day, like whoosh, get it out of there. But now like, how are we going to make life positive again? Or what are you going to do as opposed to just swirling in this negativity? Because sometimes you can have influencers in your life that just keep you swirling on how crummy your job is and how bad it is. Like that is hard to get out of. And so really being cautious, I am, I am so protective of the people I allow in my life. I used to think I just wasn't a good friend and maybe I'm not a good friend. I'm not sure still to this day, but I will say that I know I'm very, very, very selective on who I allow in my inner circle because I want to become like those people. And I know, like I know when I call Tiffany and I've had a rough day or I've been frustrated, you'll listen to me. You'll allow me to move that energy, get it out of my space, but you don't keep me in that spot. You're going to spin me into a higher level. You'll help me see it in a different way to proactively fix the solution as opposed to just swirling and how negative life is. Mm-hmm. So be, and I think it's, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I think it's hard too, because um, when you do choose those friends who, and they, they probably are fantastic friends. I have some of them in my life, right? Like I can vent to them. They can listen. They can understand. They can problem solve with me, but then it's like, it's almost that um, follow up piece, right? Mm -hmm. where it's like you've complained about this long enough like what are you actually going to do it's like no no like sometimes I just need to vent and I I I see that it maybe it's too much or too often right so you do have to be careful there too because then you have the follow-up piece of like well what did you do about it did you quit yet Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're like Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to quit I'm just frustrated (laughs) and so then you get in this spot of like you feel like you owe them an explanation or or um or you owe them like quitting my job like no I'm just going to get a new job because I can see it's frustrating not only me but it's obviously affecting other people too Mm -hmm. so you get in this swirl of like now I got to make a change I got to make a move and sometimes I think we end up making decisions in our life that we wouldn't have otherwise made had we talk to someone else or mm-hmm. resolved it on our own. Mm-hmm. And and to that point, I think it's important to, to really look when you're frustrated about something. So this is like going on a whole different zone, <laughs> but uh, to look to see, is this really going to impact me in five years? Is this decision? Yeah. R- and if not, like move on, drop it, find the solution and get back to work of what's really important versus swirling in the little pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, sometimes hard for me, but I try hard to remember the five year rule. Like, is this truly me being upset with the fact that someone showed up like da 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 da? Okay, great. I just need to address that, have the conversation. Tarly and I just did an episode on hard conversations. So oh, Tiff's giving you tools of staying consistent. Tarly gave you tools of how to have hard conversations, which we all coach on within the dental A team. Um, but then like fix the problem and move on. Make sure that you're keeping yourself in that positive state so you can show up consistently for your team. I think it's equally as important to to take care of yourself personally, especially when you're in leadership positions, to be filling your mind with goodness, to be listening to inspiring podcasts, to be reading personal development books, to be having coaches that inspire you to keep you elevated to that level that you need to show up for your team, because otherwise it can just drain you and deplete your bucket and, and what's filling it back in? Is it negativity? Is it positivity? But I really think in leadership, it's so vital to, to also fill your wellness bucket of yourself personally. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to learn how to fill your own bucket because if, you rely, if we're strictly relying on the people outside of ourselves to fill our buckets, it's never going to fill. Nope. It's never going to be enough. And you're going to resent the people around you because they're not providing for you what you think you need. Amen. All right. Which is consistency. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything right. you say you're going to do, just consistently do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So in a wrap, guys, I love what Tiff, you said of being consistent in all those pieces. If we're happy, positive, we're going to hit 50,000. Don't lower that standard. Show your team that this is what's going to happen and give them the trial testing period of the six week or however long. So you're also consistent with this isn't this isn't the way it's always going to be. We're open to suggestions and truly being open to those suggestions, um, showing up consistently with with being fair across the board and then making sure that you're not venting or bringing your team down and breaking those trust bonds, I think is how you called it. I love how you said that of of actually unraveling all the things you've been working on in your practice by breaking the trust bonds with your teams. Those are kind of my high level takeaways from this. Were there any other last minute pieces you wanted to add in to wrap this podcast up? Um, I just wanted to hit on that, that consistency is 
is it like I literally woke up with it on my heart today and I knew we were podcasting and I was like, this is what it it. is. Yeah. And it's just huge. Like you want your team to show up to huddle on time. You be there on time every day. If you're late to huddle, they're going to be late. Mm -hmm. Your doctor's never there. They're not going to show up. So they're going to value the things that you consistently show that you value as well. You're just, you're like a mom. It's just like your kids. Your kids are going to follow your suits. Mm, I love that, Tiff. I have no closing remarks. I think that's solid. (laughs) Well, Solid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was fun. It was so fun. So Tiffany, thank you as always for being on the Dental A team. Thank you for coaching our offices. You guys, Tiffany is a freaking machine when it comes to coaching calls. So office managers, if you're struggling, Tiff is phenomenal. Gosh, you have so many offices that do coaching thank calls you. with you. Um, Tiffany will do remote Zoom calls. So if you've ever been teetering on the line of do we have a coach in office? Do we not? Tiffany does an amazing job of connecting with offices via Zoom. She also does travel, but I would say, Tiff, some of your greatest strengths are you are able to connect and find problems, even just remotely. So any of you offices, if you're not ready to take the whole plunge for in office and you just kind of want to test the waters, gosh, Tiff, you, you rock that incredibly well. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I love all my coaching call clients so much. They light my heart on fire every single week. (laughs) They really do. You love them (laughs) so much. I do. (laughs) So anyway, guys, thank you, Tiffany. We will do some more. I get to see you in just a couple days. I can't wait for our company retreat in Tahoe. It's going to be amazing. And we'll probably podcast. So I'm looking forward to it. I think we should. I think we should. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tiff. And thank you, Dental Team listeners. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our Dental A Team family. Now, we're going to take it to the world. So help us out. Help us positively impact the world of dental by leaving us a review, leaving us five stars. This is how we can spread it to the masses and help even more people grow to a better version of themselves. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being a part of my Dental A Team family.